Well, I am very excited to be here with Steve Wynn of Dream Syndicate. Steve, thank you so much for taking time to be with us tonight. My pleasure. And uh, we are here at the Echo, or Echoplex, rather. Yeah. And um, it has been quite a while since the Dream Syndicate has headlined a show here in Los Angeles. And this is a very special night. So uh, how does it feel to be here playing in L.A. after all these years with the full band? Well, I, I got to say, last year's show, when we played as part of the Paisley Underground show at the Henry Fonda, that was really like the return for us, the yeah. chance to kind of come back and play um, here in town where we first formed. Yeah. And that was a great way to do it. A lot, a lot of people, yeah. all of our friends playing on the bill with us. Yeah. So in a way, this is kind of the second time, the second time around. Okay. It's nice because tonight we get to do our full show. We've, we've, been, we've played about 50 shows since we reunited mm -hmm. all around the world. We've played in, you know, all across Europe, across the U.S., and tonight we get to do the whole show of what we've done for the rest of the world. Wow, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the full a full set, a not full truncated. Set. It was a little yeah. yeah. I was very happy last year with the show, but you know, it was over before we knew it. Yeah, yeah. And I had heard that it was actually a charity event. Okay. Yes, yes, for for um, a student cause for, for music in schools and right. things like that, which is great. We all can relate to because that's where we all began. That's yeah. you know, that where we all learned how to play as kids and to encourage other kids to you know, be able to have the funds to do that and encouragement to do that, which doesn't automatically happen in the school system. It's something we all believe in. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, Steve, at the, at the uh, big show last December at the Fonda Theater, I mean, it was amazing to see you on stage with Michael from 3 o'clock, um, you know, Rain Parade, the Bengals, of course. And at the end, you guys all got up on stage and did kind of a, for lack of a better term, kind of a medley, kind of a performance all together, a lot of the, the people. What was that like to be with all of your cohorts from the old uh, Paisley Underground days? It was really fun. I mean, it, it was a great scene that we all were part of back in 82 that really gained a lot of international fame and notoriety. But it's always funny because the scene existed for one year. After 82, we all went our separate ways. So we hadn't hung out that much in the years in between. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would see, you know, I stayed close with Vicky from the Bengals and a couple other people in the various bands, but we really didn't hang out much after those days. So what was really nice that night and that weekend was that we all, everyone was still playing great music, everyone was still really friendly, and we all got along great. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, you became a jerk, and oh, you can't play your guitar anymore. Everyone was on top of their game and really friendly, so yeah. it couldn't have been better. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Yeah. Well, over the years, Steve, I know you've had a very prolific solo career, many, many albums on your discography. Mm -hmm. And through the years, I mean, looking back, either with Dream Syndicate or even solo, who are some other artists that you just are really enjoy have enjoyed collaborating with or playing on stage with uh, through the years any any good memories of artists that you've worked with over the years since the time the dream syndicate broke up I've made you know a lot of solo records I've had some really great side projects like currently with the baseball project and I played with um, gutter ball band back in the 90s and you know and and it's always good it's I, I really more and more as time goes along kind of really get off on collaboration I like working with people and seeing what they do and how I can fit into what they do it's just always been my favorite thing and I've had the I've been fortunate enough to play with a lot of good musicians mm -hmm. I good players nice people and people inspire me and across the way, if you look on any show I've played or any record I've made and look at the credits I can guarantee there's somebody who I like playing with yeah. I'm lucky that way. Very cool, very cool. Well, Steve, you know, some, some artists we've interviewed have talked about the changing state of the music industry, that it's increasingly harder to put out albums. A lot of artists are crowdsourcing their albums, dr going directly to fans. Um, what's your take on kind of the current state of affairs with music right now as a musician? Is it hard to put out content? Is it different than it was back in the 80s, distribution-wise? Um, it's changed, of course. You know, you, it, you, whether you're you know, Taylor Swift or some band down the street, you're going to sell like a quarter of what you would have sold 15 years ago, naturally. So that's a challenge. But, you know, let's put it this way. If you, if you know your music history, people weren't making records 60 years ago. They were on the road all the time. They might have made a, a 78 or a 45, but really it was all about playing live. It's just gone full circle. Yeah. You're really out there playing on stage every night for people, mm -hmm. and you might have some keepsake people can take with them, and hopefully you have new things to keep creative. Mm -hmm. The great thing I think now these days is that, okay, maybe you're not selling as many records, but people still love music. People are still, maybe more voraciously than ever. I, f I find people, old, young, are more hip to more music. Mm -hmm. They're getting it for free on Spotify. They're getting it, you know, yeah. illegally downloading it, yeah. but they're listening and they're digging it. Yeah. So it's a really, you know, great time to be playing music. You may have to find a different way to keep doing it and more challenges to do that. I'm lucky. I've had a 30-year career of playing around and um, a lot of pe enough people know my music and like it where I can keep doing it. Yeah. 
Being, being somebody young right now might, might be a challenge, but you know, yeah, yeah. you find your way. Well, I've heard, uh, heard a lot of artists who we've interviewed who've talked about, um, you know, the kind of the impact of live music that, like you said, the, the ubiquity of music in terms of being able to steal it or download it or stream it versus the preciousness the, and the increase, kind of the increasing sort of uh, rarity of being able to see an artist live and just what a once in a lifetime experience that was. I mean, I'm thinking of the December event last mm -hmm. year, the mm -hmm. Paisley Underground show. Mm -hmm. I mean, that to me felt like a once in a lifetime thing. And you can't get that from just downloading downloading a music, downloading a song, or going on iTunes. Not at all. There's nothing like live music. And you really, there's, you know, and, and the thing is, some people are going to be better at that than other people. I mean, yeah. being in a studio and having endless time and endless technology, you might be able to get, fake it pretty well. Yeah. But only, you know, it's, not everybody can do it on stage. And, and w that's what we were about from the very beginning. Yeah. Sure, we made records and records we're very proud of, but for me, it's always been about live music. Yeah. So I've, I've, I don't feel too threatened by anything. I, I'm, I'm, I can do what I do like I always did. Thank you, Steve. And any just because of the increased popularity of the sort of uh, the Paisley Underground movement and the success of the shows, uh, any any plans for some new sort of a uh, fest kind of collaborative things with many of the bands from that scene here in the in the future? Or is that did we kind of experience a one time kind of reunion thing last year that may not come for a while? It's hard to move that many bodies around in the same place at the same time. Yeah. We all want to. Okay. I think we all came away from that agreeing that we'd love to do another show that way or some kind of project it's just not easy but you know i wouldn't say it's the last time because we all had a, had a good time all right very cool and talking about your again your prolific solo work steve anything that we can expect you know solo albums here in the future that fans out there can expect to to be uh, privy to i'd say in the next year there'll probably be a new a new solo record and a new dream syndicate record so Keith, stay tuned for that. All right. Well, yeah. uh, I don't want to say you heard it first, but I'll say it yeah. here. You heard it here first. first. Oh, <laughs> Almost right. first, though. Okay. Almost first. I'll take number. I'll yeah. take uh, second uh, yeah. best with Steve. Thanks yeah. again, Steve, for your time, You're and uh, we wish you all the best. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We wanted to have just one just total freak out show and end our whole year right here in Los Angeles. Yeah. It was way longer, so thank you so much. Yeah. Man. We played our first show just down Sunset over the Club Lingerie.